Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I actually think this is probably one of the best episodes of the season. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 20 of Supernatural Season 7, The Girl with the Dungeons and Dragons Tattoo. This is the introduction of Charlie, played by Valicia Day, and she was probably one of the best parts about this show during the Carver era, I guess you would call it. Shall we play a game, bitches? That was hardly the Chamber of Secrets, right? Booyah! She was introduced here, but she would come back several times in the Carver era, and her introduction into this episode is so good. Her character is great. Just, she's such a memorable, lovable, and fun character. And something else that also should be talked about before I actually get into the nitty gritty of this episode. This episode does what others have tried to do in terms of repeating timelines. I remember when we watched that awful clown episode. I know some of you guys found it funny, but I thought it was shit. Remember when it was going to the future constantly showing Sam being beaten up and then it would jump back in time like some sort of weird, stupid 24 thing? This episode does the same thing twice but it works perfectly both times. Admittedly, it's a little home the second time, but it's because it's got you on the edge of your seat throughout this whole episode. This episode is about Charlie, who works for Dick Roman, unbeknownst to her that he is what he is, cracking Frank's drive. While she's trying to crack it, Dean and Sam find out that that his drive is in fact at Roman Enterprises in the heart of the Death Star, as Dean calls it. They have to go and find it. All the while, while Charlie is as good as she is, she's also a bit of a recluse. She says something along the lines of, I knew who I was and I was having a problem with authority, so I had to make myself indispensable as possible. She finds out just exactly what's going on. At first she thinks it's a bit hokey. Pretty sure I spent the last 24 hours hacking into a loony- But then she sees her boss get eaten. If I'll say anything, that was probably the silliest part of this whole episode is just how blatant they eat that guy and there's that uh, dolly shot on her face and you would have thought that anyone would have heard what was going on. Like I know there's that dude mowing down but maybe they couldn't get the angle they wanted in that bat in that garage. Maybe that might have been it. That's the only fault I have with this episode because once the brothers introduce themselves to Charlie and they figure out what's going on. Big sights. Like Indiana Jones stuff? There's this really great uh, breaking into the facility. She has this awkward, awkward hitting on moment with um, the guard all the while Dean is feeding her information, which by the way, another kind of little reference in terms of like the fanfare. Sam makes a bunch of Harry Potter references. She kicked ass. So then what are you gonna do? I'm gonna kick it in the ass. Good girl. Dean's like, oh, nerd, like, but he's gonna make a pop culture reference guaranteed in the next few episodes and then he's gonna be like, well, what do you not understand it? I've noticed that in the last little while. But something that I actually really like about this episode is Dick. Dick is so good in this episode. The very simplistic nature of his character and just his goal is outdone by the, the actor. He gives this edge, this cunningness, this terrifying, but charming personality to Dick and how Dick is so obsessed with figuring out what makes these unique humans who they are when there are so many that are just boring, replaceable. Tebow or Joe Biden. Wow, talk about a joke that changed. I like his, his curiosity, his ferocious curiosity, if you want to call it that, for what makes Charlie who she is. And once they are able to find out that Dick's actually after some sort of tablet thing, which they are able to make a switcheroo and they're able to replace it with a bomb. And then once everything seems to go to shit, Charlie can't escape, Bobby appears at the perfect moment who cracks the glass and he's able to have a fight with Roman. And it's actually a pretty great part. It's a good use of Bobby. He doesn't go full fledged, but he gets into that realm, brothers, bash through the car, jump through the wall, pretty cool stunt, and they're able to get Charlie out, even though she did get hurt by Bobby, because Bobby pushed a guy into Charlie's way. And there, they make this comment like, well, look what happened to Charlie. He's like, yeah, I guess. I, I kind of see where they're coming from here. Maybe they could have done a little bit more of a ferociousness to it, a little bit more of a, a collateral damage kind of element. It just seemed like it had to happen so they could make this point. But otherwise, episode is fun, funny and it's intense like 
fucking intense. You remember how long ago it was when Supernatural was intense? I forgot. All throughout, the characters, the writing, the jokes, the interactions with Charlie and Dick are so good that I have to give this episode what it deserves. Even though there are some faults, like I said, there are some bits that are just a little bit silly, like when Charlie finds out who, who the Leviathans are, kind of giving some sort of reprehensible damage to what Bobby did. I'm going to give this episode a 6 out of 7. This is by far one of my favorite episodes of this season, definitely. I actually think I like it more than the one that Bobby dies. But those are my thoughts about this episode. Let's see what you guys had to say. The Girl with the Dungeons and Dragon Tattoo is a fun episode. I absolutely love the editing and the cinematography. In spite of the season flipping back and forth between major plot and Monster of the Week episodes, it brought in three great characters, Garth, Charlie, and Kevin who we see in the next episode. One thing that doesn't that's often overlooked is that I love the Leviathans cannot copy or replicate Charlie's identity, and that some people like her, as Dick Roman puts it, are impossible to copy. It's pretty funny in retrospect when you realize how the Republicans are Levi how <laughs> Republican Leviathans are. There's a funny jab at making fun of Joe Biden in the jet private jet bar by Dick Roman happened to belong to Donald Trump. If you pause the email that Charlie reads about the private jet, you see that it belongs to Donald Trump, but to me, it makes sense that a Leviathan would take advantage of the Republican Party and its policies. If the Leviathans were around today, they, they would be Bob Seger, Kevin Feige, James Cameron, Kathleen Kennedy, other figures taking advantage of humanity for the entertainment industry. All around, it's a clever episode. It really brings the inner nerd in me. Yeah, I, I do like it. If Dick had more of this kind of persona throughout the entire season, instead of just, lol, let's just eat people, I, I think this was the best episode of Dick Roman ever in the entire show. Aside from when he uh, basically turned down Crowley and called him garbage. For such a shit season, I forgot how many beloved characters we got introduced to. Garth, Charlie, and Kenny, uh, Kevin. This is one of the rare ones that I enjoyed, minus the double entendre dick references. Also, I hate to say this, but the worst part of the episode for me was the actor that they had playing Dick, Roman. He was so cringe-inducing. I don't know if this is how he was directed to act or he just did. The scene he had Charlie in his superior office, I rolled my eyes so hard into the back of my skull. Keep up the good work, Jeremy. <laughs> um, it's funny that you like we have that. Like I think it's the best scene with him. You have it as it's as cringe-inducing. I can kind of see it. I think I'm just so desperately hanging on and hoping for something that maybe that's why I enjoyed the performance. I, I thought it was an okay performance. I think it was the most interesting turn that the guy playing Dick ever got in the show. All right, guys, thank you for your comments. Now we're heading into episode 21. Reading is fundamental. All I can see from the thumbnails that Castiel is back, so let's see. We got three episodes left. Let's get this fucking thing over with. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next review.